Hi, this is Ed from Wright. We've been posting some different information about the robotic mowers we're working at, and today I'm going to show you just a little more in depth uh, what it's doing, why we're doing it, the use case for it, and, and those types of issues. So first, let's start off with what exactly is happening right now. What we have here, we're running two mowers at once, which is where, really where you get the time savings. Um, and what we did is we took this mower, we mowed the perimeter, and then let it go, and it cuts uh, the middle area. This mower, we did the same thing. We cut a patch here on the right-hand side, and it automatically lays out the middle of the area and begins mowing. And I've got controllers here for both of them. I got my hand right by the, the emergency stop button, so the cameras are keeping an eye on everything. If anything gets close to those mowers, they immediately shut down, and um, I can also shut them down with these controllers. And the design that we're currently working with, you can actually switch the mower into remote control mode, so you can drive it around with remote control, but that's really not the point necessarily here. Um, the point is you it's a mower where you can get on it, you can drive it like a regular mower with the hand controls, maybe you can get in a ditch, you can uh, get in tight areas and that kind of thing, and then when you get into a wide open area here, you can let the mower carry on while you do some other things around the area and monitor what's going on. So it's got a nearly perfect Y turn, if you watch what it's doing there, it pivots around just perfectly. Now, uh, in terms of you know what we're looking at here we can keep an eye on a few different things here this is the section for uh, the one mower a couple options so we can change the ground speed and precision and do a couple things here um, and then we also have a map of the um, plot that it laid out here uh, when it when we program the perimeter and so it's going to optimize for the longest uh, paths on there and then um, here is a, a map of what's been mowed and not yet mowed. And, um, and we also have the ability to see some faults here. So you know, if, if the wheels are slipping or um, if the mower shuts off because it detected something, it can tell you which camera uh, it's detecting, those, those types of things. Now the machines also have obstacle avoidance. So what that means is if there's a stationary object in the middle of the field, like one of these power poles or something like that, when it gets near the pole, it'll actually go around the pole with about uh, maybe an eight or ten foot clearance around it. So it'll work its way around um, some objects. So um, let's get in the truck where it's a little bit more quiet and we're going to talk a little bit more in detail about the use case for the mower. So this is really where some of the benefit kits kicks in. You know, if you can do multiple things while the mowers are running, or in this case we're sitting in the truck talking while I'm keeping an eye on the mowers and have the controllers here, certainly you never want to walk away from the machines. They need to be um, you know, monitored at all times, um, even though they do have the camera detection on there. So the use case for this would be a property kind of like we're at, where we're at today, although I guess it could be a more finished lawn. This is just a kind of a field. There's a lot of gopher holes and stuff out here. Um, but these wide open areas, the mower is a normal mower in the tight areas with a lot of nuances, but when you're trying to blow out the large areas really quickly, um, this is where the robotics really kick in. So this is not something that you're going to be running on a you know, a quarter acre uh, residential property or something like that. Um, but, I mean, if you've got a soccer complex, um, a park, big area like this, a campus, something along those lines, where there's a lot of bulk mowing to do, um, this is where you make up huge gains. So, uh, you know, we, we, we see different questions that people have about the machine, you know, what, what, what is it doing, how does it work, these different types of things. So, uh, let me talk just like briefly about the technology here. And so um, it's a regular standard ZK, um, big powerful engine. These ones have 61 inch decks on them, um, very capable hydros. And that frame has some modifications. And so um, the controls are drive by wire. They actually feel, they're extremely responsive. They, they feel really good in manual mode, uh, but that lets the computer uh, take control of the machine uh, when it's in autonomous mode. And, um, you know, it can manage the blades, it can do all kinds of different things. Uh, we can go remote control, so it's got that drive-by-wire system. The machine has a bunch of cameras all around it, and those cameras uh, create a 360 view around the machine at all times, providing that safety zone um, to reduce the, the hazards that the machine might have. Um, it has GPS, it's connected to the internet, it's got live updates, um, it's got a lot of precision sensors that help it know where it is at all times. 
um, and, the, and those types of things. Um, <clears throat> now, in terms of you know where are we at in development, these are prototypes. So we've, we've made a bunch of pilot machines, and they're out uh, working well. I'm just going to keep an eye on this machine back here. It's finishing up the corner patch. Um, we're, we're building prototypes right now, so we've got a bunch of pilot machines running around. In terms of uh, when these machines would be available for retail sale, um, that'll be a while yet. Um, probably at least a year, if, if not more. And the reason for that is that you know, we just really want the product to be solid, reliable. Uh, we want feedback. We, we totally expect that um, how the machine, the nuances of how it's worked or programmed and these kinds of things uh, will change as we go through this process. But we're definitely at a stage where the technology works. You can see what it's doing here right now and it's getting the job done with, you know, out any big issues. Um, but there's, you know, stuff that we got to work on from a reliability standpoint as well. We want to be sure we have a very reliable product uh, before we begin retailing something like this. And so it'll probably be at least a year. In terms of price point, um, this machine here just faulted out on something. So let's check that. Uh, the camera is detecting something um, around the front and left side so I can see that there's nothing there I'm gonna have it go ahead and proceed I think it's gonna try to go around it whatever was there maybe it missed a waypoint um, so in terms of cost oh, there's a hole that's what it was so I'm going to go ahead and turn the machine off and turn the blades off. I'm going to go into remote control mode. Go for a hole there. This is live. All right, so we're getting out of the hole. I'm guessing if I reinitiate, it's going to fall back in the hole, but let's go ahead and try, see what happens. reactivating it so price wise you know anything could change we're still working through what that is but I believe that ultimately we'll be able to get this down to where we're talking in the thirty thousand dollar range something like that um, for the, the machine and because it's there's a lot of software involved in here with this um, there would also be a monthly uh, software subscription so the, these mowers are a partnership between right manufacturing and Greensy. So Greensy is writing the uh, software that runs these machines, and so um, there would be uh, software maintenance with them um, on, on that side of it. Um, and I think that, you know, a lot of times mowers, you run them through their first engine or the second engine, you trade them in, that kind of thing. I think when we look at the autonomous style mower, it's probably the type of mower that's not going to get banged up quite as much, and it's quite possible that you would run them for more hours in their life. So um, there's, there's a return on investment in that aspect of it. Uh, let's see what it's gonna do with the hole this time. Hopefully we missed it. Oh, it made it, got through. You will see that it's, it swerves a little bit when it, when it does something like that and it gets back on center. The line that we're lined up, you can see is a little bit weavy because um, at the speed the machine was going on, it was sort of overreacting. And those are the types of things that I talk about tuning in. The, the uh, positioning system has the accuracy to make perfect lines and in theory, you know, we could map out, you know, uh, you know, logos or whatever you wanted in, in the grass. There's a lot of neat capabilities with this. Um, now, one question we get is, oh, you know, the robots are taking over the world and we're taking jobs and these kinds of things. And that's, that's I wouldn't characterize it. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, what we're trying to do um, is that in, in life, there's all kinds of things that we do to have a higher, um, you know, to, to be more productive, make more money, have a higher quality of life. And so, you know, that's why we drive cars over walking, or that's why we uh, have running water. We have cruise control in our vehicles. We have all these uh, conveniences, these things that make our lives so much more productive, um, you know, so much more healthy. Um, and, and these kinds of things. And so this is, this is about the progress of technology. And so, you know, we make large, powerful, productive mowers because they, um, you know, help you be competitive and make more money and um, provide higher quality jobs and all these types of things. And so I think when we talk about autonomous technology, it's an incremental, incremental step in production. 
And so uh, we're not necessarily trying to take jobs here. Um, in fact, I believe that this type of technology creates an opportunity for a lot of new kinds of jobs. Um, you know, these mowers just don't go out and do everything by themselves. You know, we, we're, although we're getting more done per person um, in this setting, uh, you know, it still takes input. We're here today. I'm keeping an eye on both these machines as we go. And so um, they're not directly displacing jobs. It's, that's not what this is about. It's about uh, an incremental technology to higher uh, performance, higher productivity, and the ability to uh, create more money with your business. So um, I, that's generally, I'd say, where we're at with the robotics. Um, you know, although they're not available right now, I would say, uh, you know, subscribe, follow, follow along with what we're doing. It's going to be a very interesting progression over the years of where this type of stuff goes. And, um, you know, we're committed to developing these technologies. Um, and th this is also not the only thing that we're doing. You know, we, we make, we're, we're focused on other product categories, machines that have a low life cycle cost. You get a ton of work out of them. They're highly productive. They have tons of power, very efficient. And so we continue to develop all kinds of products for um, outdoor job site um, and other things. So uh, if you're not subscribed, subscribe and follow along with us, either uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, or LinkedIn. And um, we'll be putting up this kind of information from time to time on just where we're at with the, with the machines. Um, and you know, even if it's just out of interest, stay in touch. Thanks.